Harrison is in court to claim £932 owed on rent and a lost deposit after a former friend moved out of their property with no notice. Defendant Lewis says as there was no formal agreement and he was not named on the lease, he owes nothing. Do I have Harrison here? Yes, you do. S splendid. And Lewis? Yes. Now, Lewis, you know Harrison because he was a friend of yours, correct? Correct. But Harrison, you haven't seen Lewis for some time. How yeah. long has it been? Um, I bumped into him, like, the odd occasion. Harris, I'm just going to ask you this, because I want you to put your best foot forward, and I've read your case, and you've provided him with substantial evidence. Will you do your best not to stand there like a teapot, if possible? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is this still teapot? Is that more whopper, or...? <laughs> no, just try and stand up straight, if you can. Can you unfold your arms as well? Thanks very much. I can understand it can be challenging. Now, <laughs> Lewis. When was the last time you saw Harrison? Um, bumped into each other in town on nights out briefly here and there through the past two years, but not properly for about a year and a half, two years. Well, I'm going to ask you why. The answer is because of this legal suit that you've brought today, correct, Harrison? Yep. What sort of friend was Lewis to you, Harrison? Um, he was my bro, is a good way to put it. Um, we did everything together, played pool, played guitar, uh, some things I wouldn't quite like to talk about on the telly. Well, all right. I, uh, yes, I have an imagination, and I don't need to know that you both went to visit the same sort of craft fairs together. Uh, yeah, um, so, yeah, basically just uh, inseparable. Went to the, you were inseparable? Um, Style-wise, as I understand it, you certainly visit the same hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> what were Harrison's best qualities as a friend? Well, we used to make music together, um, we used to play pool together, it never ended well. Um, just a good friend, always there for you, somewhere to talk to. Somebody that you trusted, yeah, yeah. somebody you could rely upon, and that's certainly the way you felt. There are the two of you in mildly happier times. Point is, Lewis was a very good friend of yours. Were you a student some I time was, ago? yes. Did you have a grant? Uh, yeah. Excellent, as it should be. But university is very expensive. Yeah. True. And you moved into a property. What sort of property was it? This was before Lewis had anything to do with this case. Uh, it was a flat. Was a plan to move into the property with Harrison? Yes. Excellent. And the two of you were going to share the rent and share the expenses. True? Yes. And you signed a six-month contract. That's right. Who signed the lease agreement, please, Harrison? It was me. So why didn't you countersign the lease? Because my plan was to move in a little later and I wasn't there for the signing and whatnot. But it's as simple as that. Was the landlord aware that Lewis was going to be living there? Uh, yeah. You say that you were a good friend of Lewis and he accepts it. What's the most important element of friendship, would you say? Trust, definitely. Very good. Do you agree with me that that's the case, Lewis? Trust is terribly important. Yes. Now, you weren't a student at the time, right? No, no, I was working full time. Excellent. What were you doing? Facilities management, so managing engineers. What about the household bills, Harrison? What was the agreement between the two of you in respect of that? Um, they were in my name as well, and then we just split it half. No problems for the first Completely few fine. months. Now, what was, I have to understand this, what was life like during that time? The good uh, bit? It was great. I got to see my best friend every day. Um, we were really productive together. Um, productive in what sense? And we got a lot done because we used to write music together, so we got a lot done in that sense. What sort of music? What sort of genre are we talking? Uh, bangers. Gabba. What? Bless you. Like banging, like proper, like EDM. Banging what? Like EDM music, you know. Um, electronic, electronic, electronic dance, dance music. Electronic dance music, really fast though. R r and, and what was your? What did you say, Gabba? Yeah, that's yeah. one of the genres of um, electronic dance music. Right, you do electronic dance music, and you're writing this music. And as I understand it, from having dealt with cases in my own practice, some of these DJs can make millions and millions of pounds playing your music. Did you sell any of this stuff? Uh, no, we didn't. Did you used to talk to Lewis and confide in him about your personal life and about your girlfriend? Uh, that's one thing I'd say we wouldn't talk to each other loads about. Sure, lots of men, but. Do you believe that Lewis would have known how you felt about a girl, for example? Um, 
I would have, I would have thought so. But well, let me ask you, Lewis. You knew, for example, Harrison had a girlfriend before you moved in, right? And you must have known whether he liked her or not. Yeah, correct. Something happened. Yeah. Which resulted in this litigation. Harrison, you became aware that Lewis had done something. What did you find out? Um, the girl that I quite liked at the time, um, I found out that he also liked her and um, behind my back done things that I'd never thought my best friend would ever do to me. Well, you tell me what they were. Uh, so, yeah, I found out they were getting together, which means sleeping together. He was going over to her house. Um, started seeing a bit less of him, thought he was kind of acting strange. Um, what do you mean by acting strange? I don't know, like... We'd, like, literally spend every, like, day together, and there's sometimes where, like, I'd come back, and usually then I'd come back from uni, and he'd be there, like, like from work and stuff, and he wouldn't be there, and then, like, sometimes I tried ringing him, and a lot of the time he wouldn't be answering the phone. His behaviour changed. Yeah, yeah. And your instinct is there and was something wrong. when you wrong. spend so much time with someone, you kind of notice those little things. Of course so. you do. Those are big things. They're not around. The alarm bells start ringing. At some point, you discovered that he'd, in fact, been seeing this person, that you'd expressed to him you had more than a passing interest in. Yeah. You were with her, correct? Correct. And so you said to Harrison straight away, look, I'm not going to be around her very much. Would it be OK? Things haven't worked out between you and this lady. And so I'm planning to see her. This may be painful, but let's see if we can move forward. Words to that effect. No. No. What did he do, Harrison? Um, well, basically, one, one day after I finished university, um, I didn't come straight back home. Um, I went for a drink with a few people from university afterwards, as you do. Came back home and I was like, hang on, where's... Where, where, where is he? Um, some of his stuff's gone. Um, his room was an absolute mess. Uh, tried I'll ask about that in a moment. OK. Um, and I was like, this is really strange. Like, a lot of his stuff had gone. Um, obviously, he'd left some stuff, but just the kind of... his kind of, like, important stuff that he had, like his valuables, um, was all gone. But what did you discover? He'd moved out, basically. Done one. Done one? What do you mean, done one? He's done one. What does done, done one mean? One, done one for the door. We're, he's what? He's done one for the door. He's done one over on me. He's pulled one over. Pulled one over <coughs> on me. In other words, he'd left. Yeah. Now, you must have had an instinct as to why he had done that. And as I understand it, you discovered that he'd, in fact, seeing, been seeing this girl. How did you make that discovery? Um, I kind of put two and two together and kind of... At first, I thought I was being a bit paranoid and I was trying not to think that in the lead-up to it. And, and then I spoke to a few other people and they kind of said they'd seen them both together and that's kind of when I, it hit me. And how long after you discovered he'd left the property did you confront him? Um, I'd say around... Obviously, I tried ringing him, like, every day, quite a lot, and then I finally spoke to him around, like, a week or so afterwards. What did he say to you, Lewis? Told me what he'd heard. Yes. And asked me if it was true. And what did you say? Yeah. Did you apologise? No. Why not? I didn't feel there's any apology. Let me take over. What did you say? I apologised. I said sorry. Maybe it wasn't as sincere as he may have hoped. You left in the middle of the night, in effect. You left without giving him any notice, without saying to him, I'm leaving the property, without giving him an indication of what he would do to meet the rent, you simply packed your bags and went through the door, correct? Pretty much, yeah. Not pretty much, that's what you did. Yeah. Do you think that that was a reasonable thing to do? No, not at all. Excellent. That's a happy starting point. When you left, where did you go? Went to her house. Now, this is very important. Let's leave aside the two months or so that are left on the rental agreement. There was also a deposit that you had to pay at the beginning. Were you aware that there was a deposit? How much was a deposit? Uh, £350. Was that half yours? Was uh, that, it was, that was the whole thing. The whole thing. Do you know that a deposit had to be paid? Yeah. Excellent. So you know, don't you, just as a matter of common sense, you've got a professional job, that you don't get that deposit back unless you've left the property 
in the state that it can be re-rented. Did you ensure before you walked out in the middle of the night or the middle of the day without leaving notice or forwarding address or anything else, did you leave that property in a sufficient state that it could immediately be re-rented? Not particularly, but the whole deposit is not my responsibility. I did leave a few sig burns in the carpet. Let me just put it down. Put it down in big. What did you leave there? A uh, couple, couple of, of cigarette what? Burns on the carpet. Two cigarette burns in the carpet. Unfold your arms. Was that in your bedroom? There was, a, there was more than just two, when I say a couple. Several, a, several cigarette several. burns. Yeah, yeah. Few in the room, few in the living space. Did you tidy away all of your rubbish? Most of it. What else did you leave there? That's about it, I think. I can't remember clearly. Any property of any kind? Um, maybe just general clutter that I didn't want to take with me. General clutter. Now, whose responsibility is it to take away the clutter? Mine. In... Yours. Why did you leave without giving your best friend notice? Um, what were you trying to avoid? The truth. Well, what did you expect might happen? I don't know. Fear of the unknown, hence why I didn't contact him or say anything. Don't be silly. Fear of the unknown, hence why. You must have had an instinct that you were going to end up in conflict. Well, yeah. Right? What sort of conflict? An argument. Right. Do you spend your time avoiding arguments? No. Spend a lot of time making them sometimes. Yes. How long did you end up out of interest in a relationship with this girl? Are you um, still with her? No, no. How long before you left her property? About eight, ten months, maybe. Coming next. You ruined a year, financially, of his life. All because you ended up with a girl and you couldn't be bothered and you weren't brave enough to face the music, the EDM music. Anything you'd like to add, Lewis? That could have been an option if we didn't leave on such... We didn't leave! You left! At last we've got the truth about what happened. This programme is sponsored by Patient Claimline, medical negligence specialists. Wonder Smart has worked great for me. It's helping me tone my whole body. It's one piece of equipment with adjustable resistance that my whole family can use. This is the Wonder Core Smart from Fame. Smartly designed to focus on your entire core like a laser, sculpting six pack abs and toned obliques with ease. But Wonder Core does so much more. It's a total body workout plus cardio. It's small and compact, and it will give you incredible results. So visit these selected retailers to get your Wonder Core Smart today. Where will you spend this Christmas? Tom's got nowhere since his stepdad threw him out. Arthur can't remember Christmas anywhere else. Lizzie feels safer here than at home. For those who've lost their way in life, the Salvation Army could be their only hope. Call us on 0800 840 1234 to give just 19 pounds and help us make a real difference to someone's life this Christmas. Thank you. To win the International Wine Challenge Supermarket of the Year, two years running, you must sell wines like this award-winning Grand Montana Malbec and like this silver medal Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc and this sensational award-winning Prosecco. But where can you find such a fine collection? Well, Morrison's, of course. 
been lying here for hours listening for the sleigh. Can't wait until tomorrow, cause then it's Christmas Day. Dad will go downstairs and shout to us his beard. My brother's so excited, the funniest thing I've seen. Granny's sneaking chocolates, Mum cooks this and that, toys, food and crackers, Grandad's paper hat. But lying here dreaming now about presents big and small. It's my loving family, the bestest gift of all. Sky Black Friday has arrived with our best ever free reward. A 43-inch Ultra HD LG TV. Free when you join with the Box Sets Bundle and SkyQ Multiscreen for £50 a month. So you can enjoy exclusive shows on Sky Atlantic, over 350 addictively good box sets, and even watch Sky TV in another room on your tablet or mobile. Offer ends 4th of December. Search Sky Black Friday. Sky. Believe in better. No one does a classic Christmas like Delia. Free inside tomorrow's Daily Mail. Delia's sumptuous 24-page glossy festive special. Her juiciest turkey, crispiest roast potatoes, melt-in-the-mouth mince pies and perfect puds. Delia Smith's classic Christmas special. Free inside tomorrow's Daily Mail. Special of the Only Way is Essex Mus, Sunday the 18th of December on ITVB. Finally, it's over and we got justice. This programme is sponsored by Patient Claimline, medical negligence specialists. This is Judge Rinder. He's waiting to hear your case. Are you a tenant with a nightmare landlord? Perhaps you're a landlord with tenants from hell. Are you in dispute over rent, deposit or damage? Do things need fixing or repair, but nothing ever gets done? If all of this adds up, then get in touch. I want to hear your case. If you are 18 or over and would like to be considered for the show, text the word JUDGE plus your name to 6334. Text costs 25 pence plus one standard network rate message or call 090 11 Calls cost 25 pence plus your network access charge or email judge at itv.com. Please note we are unable to consider claims that have been or are currently in court. Harrison is in court to claim £932 owed on rent and a lost deposit after a former friend moved out of their property with no notice. Defendant Lewis says as there was no formal agreement and he was not named on the lease, he owes nothing. Harrison. You were left with two months, roughly, left on the rental agreement, correct? Yeah. Now, you're a student and have got a finite amount of income, right? Yeah, that's right. You were left nursing whatever that rent was. Could you pay that on your own? I could, but then it resulted in me having to move back to my parents' house. How much was the rent each month? Uh, £291. Of which you would pay half and he would pay the uh, other half? It was £291 each. Did you have to get in touch with the landlord? Um, I let him know after around... Uh, after, obviously, when I found out that I, don't, I can't live here anymore, I'm not going to be living with him. Um, but the minimum um, tenancy agreement was six months, so he said, you're going to have to wait uh, two months, try and find someone to move in with. But um, no-one really wanted to move into that room because it was a... Like, I'm going to get carpet. there. That's, that's right, though. He did the right thing. That's one of the things. You signed, I think, a year short-term tenancy agreement with a break clause after six months. Yeah. Lewis, how much was the rent that you were paying each month when you were there, please? 291. You left without paying that 291, correct? Correct. You had to move home? Yeah. Did you pay the 582 for him? Um, I did, yeah. Did you suffer any distress or were there any moving costs for you to have to move back to your parents' house? Um, the main cost is because um, I was moving back home, which was further away from my university. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I was going through quite a lot at the time. I ended up um, missing a year, which resulted on me getting kicked off the course. It's difficult for me to draw those dots. Sometimes 
even when you're facing adversity, you have to do your best. Yeah. You can't prove that. Travel costs, however, for the yeah. two months, how much more were they? Um, I was probably saying I spent about £20 more a week on travel. How many weeks? Um, be about eight, eight in total. Where's his £582, please? I haven't got £582, hence why I haven't paid it. Now, tell me about the deposit, please. Um, Presumably, the landlord came to examine the property at some point. Yeah. What did he discover, Harrison? Um, obviously, he said we need new carpet. Um, I've been told, and it's been admitted by Lewis, that he left some of the cigarette holes. Could any of that be you? No. Do you smoke? I do, yes, but it wasn't me. Well, how do I know that? You've got no evidence. Because they're in his room. Uh, also, he left, like, um, like, kind of plates that um, were kind of gathered a bit of mould on top of him and stuff, and um, then just left, like, a few dirty clothes that I don't think he wanted and stuff. That deposit, did you end up getting any of it back? No, none of it. What did that mean for you in terms of your university career, please? Um, well, it means I couldn't afford to live closer to university at that point. Um, I had no money at all, so I, it cost... I was trying hard to get um, all my equipment for university and, say, like, trips that were organised. I couldn't go on any of that. I felt like I was missing out. Did you know that? Yeah. You did know that? Yeah, yeah. I can see from looking at you and hearing you the impact that this has had. Not an insignificant amount of money. What has this done to your friendship, such as it was? Um, it's gone, and even if there was any friendship and he did pay me the money back, um, I don't think I could trust him ever again. Lewis, do you care about this at all? Yeah, I've lost my best friend. You ruined a year, financially, of his life. All because you ended up with a girl and you couldn't be bothered and you weren't brave enough to face the music, the EDM music. Do you miss Harrison? Yeah. Anything you'd like to add, Lewis? Yeah, just it. That could have been an option if we didn't leave on such sour... On a such a sour really Talking, thought. we didn't leave. You left. True. Harrison, you brought a claim against your friend Lewis. Lewis is correct to some extent. You signed that lease agreement. That meant that you were financially liable for the rent each month. However, by virtue of all of the evidence you've provided, especially your testimony in this case, and Lewis's admission, he accepted that he was liable for half of that rent by virtue of a verbal contract, which I'm perfectly satisfied you have. Yeah. That meant that he was aware of what his expenses were and certainly it was implied that he could not walk away from that contract, certainly before the six months was up, and that if he didn't know that, it was incumbent upon him to ask. Because anybody, even the biggest moron, would know that once you pay rent and once you enter into an agreement that you are responsible for the rent and that you have to give reasonable notice before you leave. It's as simple as that. He knew that, so whether or not he signed for it or not, he's still both morally, yes, and legally liable to pay for the rent that you were unable to meet. To that extent, your legal reply is dismissed. Two months' rent wasn't paid. That's £582, and you're entitled to the lot of that. I then turn to the deposit. Again, Lewis's reply is, well, it was 50-50. Understood? 50-50. How can he be sure that he caused all the damage? And the answer is because you've proved to me, Harrison, so that I'm more sure than not that the cigarette burns in the carpet were the main reason that the deposit was not returned. What's yeah. more, I'm perfectly satisfied by his own admission that he left the place in a disgusting state. Amongst other things, he left his own property there, which he had no intention of recovering. That on its own, would be enough for the landlord not to return you all the money. That's not your fault. Yep. Therefore, he's liable for the full sum of the deposit. Now, here's the thing, Harrison. When you came to court today, you were only claiming for two sums, £932, the unpaid rent and the deposit. 
during the course of the questioning, during the course of this trial, I have become perfectly satisfied that Lewis's behaviour in leaving the property in the way he did, without forwarding address and with no attempt to try and assist you find somebody else to move into that space, was outrageous. And it seems to me that it knowingly left you in a very bad financial situation. Therefore, I'm also prepared to grant you the reasonable costs that you had to incur to travel to university and to move home. Total, therefore, is £160. You get full deposit and the rent. The total is £1,092. That's the award of this court. Harrison was awarded £1,092 by the court. Let's find out how both parties felt about the judge's ruling. So, I'd quite like a proper apology, but I didn't think this would ever be happening, but can you be willing to shake my hand and get Obviously. this over and done with? Obviously. It's going to take a lot more than shaking hands, but... I'm sorry, mate. I think we could do with just sitting down and properly talking, because it's... With, when I bumped into him and, with, like, I've tried hassling and hassling him, it just felt like I'm just pecking his head. Whereas now I feel like we've kind of got that all out the way. He's apologised, shook my hand, like, that's not happened in two years. The reason we've got in this situation is obviously down to me. And I think it's a case of a week turned into a month and a month turned into a year, and then I was just like, well, I'm not going to speak to him now, so... I don't think the bridges are all completely burnt. I still think that, well, I think, and I want to be mates again, but that's ultimately down to you. We've got a lot to talk about anyway. Next.